Tell me if you've heard this before. Another major development in the Russia probe. Could this one make Bob Mueller's obstruction case even stronger? A former federal prosecutor here to boil it all down for us. Then my conversation with Pulitzer Prize winning reporter who has been looking into the Trump basically phenomenon for 30 years and particularly the Trump White House. He says things are a lot worse than you even think. Also, new developments on the messy rollout of the cashless tolls at the Mario M. Cuomo Bridge. Did all those people who got all those fines for hundreds of dollars, did they finally get a break? We'll tell you tonight. Evening, everybody. Welcome to RFL. I'm Richard French. A busy Friday. Here we go again. Uh, we start with more big news when it comes to the Russia probe. Times first here to report that President Trump ordered his White House counsel to tell the Justice Department to fire Bob Mueller. But Don McGahn, he refused, saying he'd quit instead. The president can't directly fire a special prosecutor. The Justice Department has to do it. And this all brought back memories of the infamous Saturday Night Massacre when President Nixon moved to fire special prosecutor Archibald Cox back in 1973. The attorney general and his deputy, they resigned instead of dismissing Cox. And a judge later ruled the firing was illegal. The Times says Trump gained various reasons for wanting to can Mueller. The first one involving a dispute over the fees at the Trump golf course in Virginia that caused Mueller to resign his then membership. Trump also said Mueller couldn't be impartial because he worked for the law firm that represented Jared Kushner, his own son-in-law. The president also reportedly said Mueller was interviewed to return as FBI director before he was appointed special counsel. And that again would mean he could be biased, at least in Trump's mind. Trump, he's brushing off the entire story, calling it what else but fake news. And in the past, he's denied he even considered firing Mueller. Mr. President, have you thought or thought about or considered uh, leading to the dismissal of the special counsel? Or is there anything that Bob Miller could do that you would send you in that direction? I haven't given it any thought. I mean, I've been reading about it from you people. You say, oh, I'm going to dismiss him. No, I'm not dismissing anybody. Are you considering firing Robert Mueller? No, not at all. Now, if you look at those dates in August and in October, those were after the June order, reportedly, that multiple news uh, operations have confirmed that he said fire him. Anyway. Trump's also repeated that denial to reporters when the cameras weren't rolling. Trump's team has also continuously denied that Trump has ever even considered firing Mueller. And you don't have to take my word for it, take theirs. The president has not even discussed that. That the president is not discussing firing Bob Mueller. But will he commit we not are to fire him? and cooperating with. He, he has not even discussed not fire. He's not discussed firing Bob Mueller. Is he setting the stage no, for firing on, Chuck, Bob Mueller? Con no, there's no, there's no, there's no way. There's no there's way no he's going to fire. Him. There's no conversation about that whatsoever in the White House, Chuck. We None have whatsoever. continued. You guys keep bringing that up. The, let, let me say this, and I have said this. There is no conversation regarding firing Robert Mueller, and there's no basis to fire Robert Are Mueller you ruling on anything out? that we've seen. So. I'm, I will say this, the president has not indicated to, to me or to anyone else that I work with that he has any intent on terminating Robert Mueller. And for the 1,000th time, we have no intentions of firing Bob Mueller. All those apparently lies. So does the president's desire to fire special counsel Bob Mueller after he did fire the FBI director James Comey add up to obstruction of justice. We're going to ask our legal expert that question in a moment and where the investigation goes from here. But when you put those events in context, they sure as heck seem to look a whole lot worse for this president, if that's even possible. And for more, I want to bring in our senior political correspondent, Andrew Whitman, because none of this happens in a vacuum. No, and, and remarkably, Rich, when you, when you start looking at the timeline, the one thing that jumps out of you is that it began from almost the moment that Donald Trump became president of the United States and took the oath of office. And with his cry today that the Mueller story is fake news, it continues and now has kept going through almost every moment of this Trump presidency. Let's, let's start with January 27th. Just seven days into his presidency, Trump has dinner with FBI Director James Comey, who's investigating both Russian influence in the election and National Security Advisor Michael Flynn. Trump, according to Comey, tells him, I need loyalty. 
February 14th, 2017, after clearing the Oval Office of other people, including the vice president, Trump also, according to Comey, asks his FBI director to drop his investigation of Michael Flynn. Three months later, Trump fires Comey. Officially, it's because of how Comey handled the Hillary Clinton investigation during the campaign and questionable claims about morale at the bureau. But Trump later tells NBC's Lester Holt he fired Comey because of the Russia investigation, a claim he also repeats to the Russian ambassador and foreign minister at a meeting in the Oval Office the day after Comey is fired. And the only way the American people know about what was said in the meeting is from the Russian government and Russian press. Different track now, March 2017. Trump begins to pressure Attorney General Jeff Sessions not to recuse himself from the Russia investigation or anything connected to the 2016 election. But on the advice of career Justice Department attorneys, Sessions does recuse himself. In May, after Comey's firing, Sessions number two, Rod Rosenstein, now in the position of authority because of Sessions' recusal, names Robert Mueller special counsel. July 2017, unhappy that the FBI investigation is continuing now under Mueller, Trump pressures Attorney General Sessions to fire the acting FBI director, Andrew McCabe. McCabe remains an ongoing target of Trump, the GOP, and conservative media to this day because his wife ran for state office in Virginia and got a campaign contribution from Terry McAuliffe, then the governor of Virginia, who has close ties to Bill and Hillary Clinton. March 22, 2017, with Comey not bending to Trump's pressure to drop Flynn in Russia, Trump asks two of the nation's top intelligence officials, Director of National Intelligence Dan Coats and National Security Agency Director Mike Rogers, to pressure the FBI to drop its cases and to deny the existence of any evidence of coordination between the Trump campaign and Russia. Neither man complies. But they are not alone. Senate Intelligence Committee Chairman Richard Burr faces similar requests from the White House and does not comply. The man on the right, CIA Director Mike Pompeo, though, a former far-right congressman and Trump supporter, does make public statements denying Trump-Russia links. There's no word whether he also tried to pressure the FBI to back off Flynn or Russia. Lot to unpack there, and it's been going on again since almost day one of this presidency, Rich. Little items all trying to, seeming to try to undermine the investigation and get people to back off this investigation, whether it's Flynn or Russia. And can you imagine, I was thinking about this today, if one twentieth of this was perpetrated, forget about by Obama, which is maybe you say easy, any other president in recent memory, what would happen? I, it's if you step back and you say this person with evidence from the intelligence agencies, his team coordinated with Russia in some capacity, this person then went through all of this, fires the FBI director who's looking into him, then is prepared to fire the special counsel, and everything else that goes, it is beyond comprehension how at any other moment in American history this would be tolerated or abetted by a particular party. I know we'll talk about that next segment, but it is mind-numbing. The, the only comparisons that I can think of are Nixonian, yep. where there was some interdepartmental pressure where I believe the CIA was asked to try to pressure the FBI in some of those cases, but not to this extent, not with this many people, and the general public didn't know this much at this point in the Watergate discovery process. All right, Andrew, thank you. Let's bring in our guest right now. We're joined by former federal prosecutor Roland Riappel. And Roland, um, first off, I don't know what's more troubling. I was thinking about this right before the show started, that this happened or that it's not shocking. I, I, that we've reached I, the point where it's not shocking, Roland. Yeah. What does that say about yeah. what we've become in the last year? It's 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 very frightening, Richard. I mean, you know, I, I heard the lead in to the to the piece, and um, you know, this is one twentieth or something like that of what Nixon did, and that got the Republican Party to rebel against him and throw him out of office. Um, and the Republicans seem to be just fine with Donald Trump. And the public is overwhelmed with this stuff, and it has become the new normal. Um, it's really frightening uh, to think that we may be on the verge of a true autocracy uh, with him in control. And, Roland, let's, and let's explain that wants. really clearly, because Andrew touched on this, too. There's a reason in the brilliance of our founding fathers and everything else, we have checks and balances in this country. Explicitly, Donald Trump has said uh, on camera and intimated to others clearly with other people in present, 
He doesn't, be he believes everyone in the government in effect works for him. The special counsel for a good reason, and this should be exhibit A, this is why no president, particularly this one, should be able to fire an independent counsel. Um, I mean, I always sit back and I, and I just marvel at how smart these folks were, you know, more than 200, nearly 300 years ago in this country to figure out the separation of powers in effect here. And, right. and here we are in 2018 with a good example as to why. Yes, exactly. And, and even to fire the special counsel requires quite a bit of process. You know, it's not like the president can just point his finger at him like he's on The Apprentice and say, you're fired. He has to be fired for cause. It has to go through the Department of Justice, and he has to be terminated by uh, the AG or the acting AG or someone over there. Uh, and that does, at a minimum, allow for the kind of... Um, political turmoil that that would come down with the uh, like the Saturday Night Massacre where you had people resigning and, and all of that so uh, it's not going to be easy for Mr. Trump to get rid of Mr. Mueller and now and, and now to, to support that there's a movement in Congress to further uh, immunize Mueller here from any such action will be able to carry out now talk about the significance yeah, but I don't know Richard yes. I don't think that's going to pass I don't, I don't think a single Republican will vote for that. Unbelievable. Uh, so well, they, they're not going to stop it. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, then let's talk about what the importance of what we learned was, not just that it was up for consideration, widely discussed, and there had to be threats of resignation to chill that. But in terms of the case, how important is it in terms of evidence of intent as it relates to obstruction? It's very strong evidence of intent, and it's clearly relevant. And uh, it's one more sort of silver bullet uh, right through the heart of Donald Trump as president here. Um, we have loads, boatloads of evidence of uh, intent already. We, you know, things like the Lester Holt interview and the statements made to the Russian ambassador uh, are enough to prove intent in the case, but this is another very devastating piece of proof uh, that shows us what Mr. Trump's intent was. The, the reasons he wanted to fire Mueller are so clearly pretextual, they, they're, they're nonsensical almost, that it's absolutely clear he wanted to fire Mueller to stop the investigation just as he said to the Russian ambassador. And there's a belief, I, we don't know the definitive answer right now, but as a former federal prosecutor, you'd have a better guess than anyone. There's probably paper trail here that shows about the multiple communiques that, hey, I want him gone, probably even some of the rationales for it, whether it be digital or otherwise. Uh, there's a belief here that Mueller's probably already got this. Oh, yes. I mean, and, and, the, and the truth is, Richard, we just don't know. Mr. Mueller has played his cards very close to his vest on the investigation of Russia and its contacts with the Trump campaign at various points. We do not know at all what was gathered when the FISA warrant uh, was issued and the phones were tapped. We don't know what was said on those phones. We don't know what text messages went back and forth. Um, Mr. Mueller has all that in his back pocket, and uh, we just have not seen any of it yet. And, and he's done that, I think, consciously in the way he's charged the cases so far. He's steered clear of any charge that would require him to turn over these materials. So, Roland, do you believe, I mean, it gets to a strategic question. There's ample evidence, as you just laid out, for obstruction right now. There was always right. going to be a two-pronged investigation on the part of Mueller. It was for obstruction, and then, um, obviously, you have the second part, which is collusion. So there's two different ways to do this, right? He could say, all right, I'm going to go, I'm going to first lay out my first case of obstruction, or because now, theoretically, he's immunized, given what we've just learned here, he can keep moving on the collusion track um, and get that one done and present both at the same time. Which way do you think they're probably right. considering? You know, I'm sure that there's a great deal of sort of playing this out in Mueller's office and trying to figure out which strategy is best. 
I think it depends on whether Mr. Mueller's judgment is that bringing the obstruction case first will result in um, a lot more cooperating witnesses like Michael Flynn. Um, if there are people who participated in Mr. Trump's attempts to obstruct justice, and if there are people inside the White House who've lied about that or are proven to have assisted the obstruction in some way, and if Mr. Mueller believes that he can then flip those people on Trump, it may make sense to bring that case first. Now, the reason you wouldn't is if the people you have in that case are people like Don Jr. and uh, Jared Kushner, both of whom might somehow be involved in that case. Obviously, uh, Donald Jr. made the false statements that were drafted by Trump on the plane. Jared Kushner had an awful lot of contacts with Russia and recommended the firing of Comey. If those two are charged, they're not as likely to flip. So if those are your two additional targets in the obstruction case, then you might just hold it in your back pocket until you're ready to bring mm -hmm. everything at once. This really does explain or confirm why they were so, I'm talking about Mueller and team, so dead set on moving an obstruction first, because it was almost beat the clock. If they had enough, then Trump yeah. couldn't move on them. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. And, and you see, I, you, you see the wisdom now of their moving so quickly to bring some charges against some defendants like Flynn and uh, Manafort, the easy layup charges they had right on the face of it, they brought those quickly to show results and uh, show that this is a real case and it's moving ahead. We've got a couple of people have pled guilty already. And at that point, uh, it makes it impossible, I think, for Mr. Trump mm. to legitimately remove Mr. Mueller. Hey, Roland, uh, it, 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 it's going so well. Uh, uh, in next segment, Andrew and I are going to get into some of the, uh, the politics of this and, and also um, some of their responsibility in, in how this has been covered. But from your vantage point, yes, we can look at the Devin Nunes's and the Trey Gowdy's of the world and the Johnson's who are offering yeah. canard after canard here just to try and distract from what's yeah. going on. But is it your sense right now as you look at both the Justice Department um, and some of the folks from the McGanns and the rest that are working within this, that we have enough backstops um, that people will say, that's a line I'm not willing to cross for you, Mr. President, or are you concerned that the Justice Department that you knew and you grew up in is much different than the one we have today? Uh, I, I think the Justice Department we have and the FBI we have are still the Justice Department and the FBI I knew. Uh, I do not think that Mr. Trump will ever get to a point where he will have them give up their independence. I think um, inside the White House, it's a very different thing. I think Mr. McGahn's um, protest was both self-interested and appropriate. Um, you know, he was a lawyer preventing a client from committing a new crime, yep. and that's admirable. But remember, if he was going to be the one to yeah. uh, try to obstruct justice his by demanding neck, the firing, his neck would have been on the chopping his block. His neck would be on the chopping block. Hey, Roland. Exactly right. Roland, so, I got I to gotta yeah. get to a break here, but I have no doubt <laughs> that you and I will be talking uh, very soon, as always. <laughs> uh, thank you, my friend, for uh, making the time. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, it's fascinating. Good to be with you, Richard. And disturbing. Bye. All right, coming up next, uh, we just spoke about the legal. Now we look at the political Republicans. Many shrugging it off as no big news, and as you can expect, Fox News trying to deny that it even happened, but it just got caught in midair.